I am the owner and founder of the FACTS Youth Program. What is the FACTS Youth Program? So the FACTS Youth Program is a program that I started in January of 2018. And what we do is we educate young people in the community about concepts that traditional education does not incorporate into the curriculum any longer. So the FACTS is actually an acronym that stands for Financial Literacy, Agriculture, and Nutrition communication, trades, and STEM, or STEAM, as they're adding the art piece into um, the STEM um, part. So, so, that's how does, so how does that like that work exactly? Like if, if, I mean, that's a great, that's a great idea. Like the financial, I love that because you really don't learn that in school. You don't learn it in school um, no. at all. And it's, it's becoming an issue, especially when kids graduate and they're um, at a legal age where they can get their own credit card, um, but potentially wind up in debt, mismanaging their money, and don't understand how impactful that can be in the future when you want to buy a house, possibly get a car loan, and different things like that. You know, I it happened to me. So with that information and that experience, I tried to teach my children, and now we educate other young people. And finding that even parents really aren't exactly sure, especially in the Black community, how to manage money, how to build generational wealth, and, you know, manage things like credit, uh, stocks and bonds. Now we have the digital currency like Bitcoin and things like that. So all of that is encompassed in, you know, what we teach in the financial literacy piece. So did you, you said you, do you, you organize with STEM? Like, how do you, do you go to schools? Like, do you have teachers? Like, how does it work? We have staff and we have a youth program um, and we're trying to um, actually push into other programs so that we can expand because we have a building model coming soon. But my goal right now is to familiarize the community with the concepts that we employ. So we teach kids in a lot of different creative ways. After school, we have push in programs that we do all year round. That's that's really cool. I mean, I wish, I think, I don't know if everybody, I'm in my mid thirties, right? So like, I wish that I would have learned about finance. Like my parents tried to teach me, you know, about yeah. credit, but I think sometimes when you hear things from your parents, like it's almost not the same as when you learn mm -hmm. it from someone else. Yeah. And we have hands-on application too. So it's not this year boring, run of the mill, addition, subtraction, counting money. No, we have hands-on application. And what we do is we do evaluations with kids in a quarterly basis. So we can track progress to see, are you applying these concepts to, you know, your everyday life and has it made a change in, you know, what you do and, you know, just to make sure that they're getting it and to make sure that it's actually impactful. Because a lot of times we've all said generation to generation, you know, you ask your teacher, are we going to use this in the real world? You know, how are we going to use this in the real world? So we're allowing and, you know, um, mandating the kids to actually use the concepts we're teaching them in the real world. So how many um, children do you serve or children, I guess, into into teens and in what area? Like where right now, in the region? Age group. Oh, right now, 20. Right now we have 20. Um, and we're trying to get, you know, more funding so that we can um, expand. But right now we have 20 kids um, in the age range. The youngest kid is eight years old and the oldest kid is 19. Wow. Very cool. Okay. So you sort of segued right into what we were going to talk about, right? There's this, um, what I'm learning is about the peace, the Rochester Peace Collective. Um, and based yes. on what I've read, there is some grant money available, right? Yes. So um, you had some things to say about how that money was being um, allocated at this press conference mm -hmm. earlier today. Yeah. Right. So what's going on with that? Did you guys get any of that money or like how, what's going on with that? So w we convened today based on the outline because based on what the RFP, um, which is response or proposal, you know, to the viewers who don't know, what the RFP outlines in that grant, um, who would be eligible, the criteria for eligibility and the end result did not exactly line up. So we have some concerns, we have some questions, and we'd pretty much like answers um, to things. Planned Parenthood was at the top of our list today. 
There are other organizations on there that we are familiar with, but these are bigger companies that are funded by, you know, New York State and federal government who already receive, you know, they're, they're heavily funded. And like I was saying in the press conference that there are a lot of uh, us in Rochester. Rochester is small. And for our boots on the ground organizations and our grassroots organizations, we pretty much know each other, you know, so we didn't see the, um, we didn't see that money allocated to the places where we feel like it can be best utilized for the people who are literally hands on with the youth. You know, for example, when there's a shooting or a homicide, you know, many of our community partners, including, including myself, we literally show up on scene. You know, um, there are a lot of prevention pieces that we put in place. We hold conferences. We have um, book bag drives. Rock the Peace just had a um, holiday um, Christmas party that, you know, we try to bring the young people in. And it's for the young people who lost a parent um, to violence or maybe your parent is incarcerated. And, you know, they're trying to fill that gap by saying, hey, there are still people here that love you. You can still, you know, get a nice gift for Chris, Christmas and just let them know that there are people in the community that you can reach out to and talk to. So for the people who are pretty much working 365 days a week um, towards, you know, the reduction of gun violence and to make sure that we have safe places for the youth, those are the people that we feel should have been getting those monies. And based on the stipulation of what the RFP stated, that's what it should have been, you know, based on that too. And so we have places like Planned Parenthood that we are totally against because Planned Parenthood, you know, regardless of what side you are on for abortion, they are not um, an organization that pushes in to like schools to talk about safe sex, <clears throat> to talk about family planning, to talk about abstinence, you know. So, and where do you fit into that? And they have gotten. Um, I think $4 billion already to their organization, and we're not confident that they will be um, able to navigate in the inner city and into the urban areas to do the work that we're doing. So, I mean, that makes sense. Um, did you, were you on the list at all? I did apply, yes. Did, you, did, get, apply, uh, did you get any of the grant money? I did not. Um, get any of the grant money. And that's, if, if I had been a recipient, my stance would still be the same. My stance would still be the same um, for Planned Parenthood. There is a company called Line Up, Line Them Up Barbers that's based in Utica. And so there's things like that. That's not Monroe County. That's not the city of Rochester. How did they qualify? You know, so this is supposed to be grant money for people in the city of Rochester. And, and that's a little concerning. And so these, this is our open letter to city council for re revision and to look back at some of the recipients because, you know, how does someone in Utica get money and someone in Rochester does not? Well, yeah, fair enough. Have you received um, any kind of response from the mayor yes. or anything like that? What What do you know now? Um, well, we, we haven't re received a response from the mayor or anyone city council pertaining to the press conference we just did today at 11, um, which is fair, but I did receive a email letting me know that I was not selected as a rece recipient. Oddly enough, that email came maybe an hour after their live press, co press conference to showcase the ones who did receive the award. So I was like, mm, the time is kind of interesting, but okay. I already knew because I saw it on social media and on the news, <laughs> but thanks for the email after the fact, you know, so yeah. So you're hoping that the the city council can go back and kind of reevaluate and potentially clear up some of the thing, the qualifiers, the things that would make you qualify for this money? No, not so much look at the qualifiers would adhere because as i said it was for small organizations and small small um companies to receive the money so while i will admit abc action for a better community does great work in our community that's not a small organization you know we have a, there was a list i don't have right in front of me um i think center for the youth you know some of the some of the organizations um you know are funded and operate and have been operating 
consistently um, due to the funding that they receive on a regular basis. And I believe this was an opportunity for the ones of us who are not big, you know, nationally held companies to be able to do something in our communities. <clears throat> there was room for expansion. So if we wanted to, you know, set up and hire employees to, for people to help us do this work, you know, that was what that money was supposed to be for. So it's just a question of, you know, the decision making, um, where people are already handpicked, and where do we go from here to, um, I guess, be transparent and, you know, I believe we should get some answers because we do a lot of things out of our pockets. Some of us get out of our beds at two o'clock in the morning. Some of us leave our families with dinner on the table. You know, when we get a call about a shooting or a homicide um, or any number of things that can be going on, including prevention. You know, we sacrifice a lot of our time. Um, and we, it's just like it's just like first and second nature for us to do so. So when an opportunity presents itself, we would like to be able to, you know, in all fairness, mm -hmm in all fairness, take a part of it and um, be confident that when we submit, be confident that when we submit certain things that they're going to be looked at circumspectly um, and given a fair chance.